Welcome into SwansuAthletics.com before it's senior day. Huge game for Southwestern Oklahoma State football. They'll take on Harding University on Saturday, and we're joined by linebacker Austin Loomis. Thanks for taking the time, man. Appreciate it. No problem, thanks. Absolutely. All right, well, you guys are on a roll right now. Three straight wins. Um, you know, what do you think uh, has, has worked well for you over the last three games? Let's, let's start on the defensive side. Obviously, you're a defensive guy. But from halftime of the ECU game and then through this last game against uh, Oklahoma Baptist, you guys have really been playing on point. What's going well? I just feel like our defense is really finding its stride as a group. I feel like maybe those first couple of games we didn't maybe fully trust each other, and now it's just we're hitting our, which is kind of a good thing at the end of the season, you mm -hmm. know, we're hitting our best form, I think, as a defense right now. I just think we're all clicking. We all trust each other. We all know what we can do, and I don't think people expected us to be this good as a defense, but we kind of use that chip on our shoulder as well, and so we're trying to just get better every week. And it seems like you've gotten better as the defense has gotten deeper as well. Just to the linebacker spot, Gentry getting more snaps, Julian getting more snaps as well. Uh, you're even seeing uh, some of the younger guys in there and take snaps at, at, at all the positions. How has that helped uh, the defense? Yeah, and you're definitely right. I, I truly believe we have the deepest linebacking core mm -hmm. in the conference. I mean, we have definitely six guys who can play. But... You know, even with a couple people being out, like my roommate, Tyler Fallis, you know, we just keep having people step up, and it's incredible. You know, Clinton Horn has had a couple of amazing games. Yeah. Talk mm -hmm. about someone who, you know, when he got his chance, he is not, let like, let down at all. He's really showed, showed everyone what he can do. So it's just people like that constantly, you know, getting their shots and not letting him waste, go to waste. Well, he's, uh, you know, let's talk about Clinton for a moment, or, you know, just a guy like that. Is that inspirational to the defense to see a guy who has labored? This was his fourth year in the system. I think his top tackles in a year was like five or something like that. And then a couple games ago against Southeastern, he breaks out and has, you know, five and one half or, or whatever. Is that is that inspirational to you guys? Yeah, it's inspirational not because we didn't know we could do it, yeah. but just to see what hard work does. You know, because we, I mean, I, I'm one of his friends, and I knew he could do it. But just to see how hard work for four years really pays off. And last game, his two tackles were both sacks. So it just really shows that hard work pays off. We're talking with Austin Loomis here, and you're talking about how the defense is playing its best right now. And you have the most unique challenge that you're going to have all season when you take on Harding. Does that kind of, you know, maybe not help you be full of yourself or anything, but a little bit more confident heading into this game just because uh, you know that you guys are starting to hit your stride? Yeah, definitely. As a defense and as a team. As a defense, knowing that we've been playing our best ball lately, that helps. But then a three-game win streak just for our whole team also helps a lot going into a game with a team that's always as good as Harding is. Well, let's talk about Harding a little bit because they're going to run that flex bone and it's like you know what's coming, but then you don't know what's coming on any given play. Uh, they're going to run one of about, you know, uh, five or six different plays and you just don't know who's going to get the ball. Uh, what did you learn about playing against this defense, or about playing against this offense, I should say, by playing in that game last year against Harding? Well, that was definitely a wake-up call for me. That was my first game as a starter. That's a tough one to go so through, It was man. a really tough game for me as a redshirt freshman, my mm -hmm. first game. But, you know, you learn that because on the roster, they're not the biggest team, Harding. Mm -hmm. they're not, their offensive line doesn't just blow you away. But they were some of the hardest hitting, the technically sound. I mean, they, they really know how to run their offense to the T, and they run it really well. So you, as a defense... I learned that you really have to know your job and have to fully trust everyone else on the defense to their 111. Because if everyone does their 111, we can stop it. But, you know, one guy messes up and doesn't do his job, then it's like a 20-yard run or a touchdown. And there are some teams where you can key on a certain guy to say, man, watch number 20. If yep. he gets the rock, you know, or if he's in the slot, they're going to him. Like maybe number one for Oklahoma Baptist this past week, he was getting the ball a lot. But it's not like that for Harding. You can't really key on one guy. How does that change things? Yeah, that, that's a good point, too, because most teams do have one or two guys that you can really try to, like, shut down. But in an offense where Harding, like Harding, where they spread it out so much, not spread it out, but spread out the carries, you know, you just, 
I, it's hard to even say how to defend them except for swarming and just playing team defense because there is not one person that stands out on their team. There's a constant variation to face, and so you just have to be ready for it. Well, I was talking about this with somebody today that it doesn't, it's senior day, you know, on Saturday, but it doesn't really feel like senior day. It feels like senior day should be like a finale, bringing everything to a close, but you guys have a lot of goals. If you can figure out a way to get past Harding, you've got a lot of goals that are still attainable for you beyond that. So, yeah. um, you know, I, I'm sure you're going to, you know, play hard for Tyler and play hard for the defensive ends and for the corners and the rest of the guys that are seniors. But at the same time, you've got so much more ahead of you. How are you thinking about that going into uh, this game at home? Yeah, this is a huge game for multiple reasons, like you said. It's senior day. We're still playing for something. Mm -hmm. Not that we – I mean, we're always playing for something, but yeah. – yeah, we, we're trying to get a bowl game and outside chance of a playoff spot. and We're trying to get as high in the conference as we can. Plus, we're undefeated at home, so you don't want to lose at home when you have 4-0 on the season, so you don't want to get a loss on that. And we, I think we'd be the only team in our conference who goes undefeated at home this year, so that's another cool thing. But it does make it a little bit more of an emotional game that it's the seniors' last home game. And that's always something to really – try your best for, not that no one doesn't try your best, but that adds a lot to the game too. I know going into last week, there was, you know, a, there could have been some outside distractions, but you guys did a nice job of keeping it together and, and performing well as a team. How do you think this team can be better through, you know, it, at times it's looked really easy for you guys and at times it's been really difficult. How has that made you guys a, a better team as a whole going through those peaks and valleys? I just think the way that we've handled the adversity this year really shows what type of team we are. We've had a couple of really hard losses that, you know, we're not very happy with. Well, we're not happy with any of these losses, but it shows the character of my teammates, I think, with how we've responded to adversity time and time again, just with multiple different things. You know, I mean, I see it every day in the locker room, every day on the field, and in the weight room, and in the classroom, the, how good of guys are on this team, but I think that should show everyone else how good the guys are on this team, too, responding to the adversity. Absolutely. Well, Austin, we can't wait for Saturday. Thanks for your time, man. Thanks. Appreciate it. Hey, I'm John Little, alongside Dylan at Power, tight end for the Southwestern Bulldog football team. Appreciate your time, man. Thanks so much. Thank you. It's good to get to know you, and it's good to, man, we've uh, just, we're talking about, we've been just uh, tracking these Menlo guys in uh, <laughs> time after time, and um, you guys have come in and, you know, really uh, become a part uh, of this team in a, in a very quick order. What do you think has helped you guys to do that? Because I think I've, I've heard from a man that you guys, you know, really enjoy being a part of this team. Oh, definitely. We love this uh, Swell Suit team. And uh, the thing is that uh, the, the team was so close and they, they brought us in with open arms. And, uh, you know, they said we're going to win and uh, we, we wanted to win with them. And, and uh we fit in. We fit in perfectly with this team, and uh, they've helped. They've helped us with that. So, well, this is a southwestern team that's been hungry to win. Yeah. Uh, what? And they've and they've gotten it done. You guys have gotten it done. What do you think? Um, I, I guess. What are the attributes of this team that you like? That feel that give you an edge? I mean, I'm not just talking about the the athletic attributes or like this guy's a better athlete than the guy across from him. Uh, but what is it character-wise about this team that gives them an edge? I think we're the toughest team. Um, I think we bring a, ma a mentality that uh, we're going to hit you in the mouth, and uh, that's why uh, we run the ball so effectively, and our, our defense is playing so well. Our defense has been uh, killing it for the last couple of games for us, and throughout the season, actually, it's been it's been a big part of us. And uh, they, they bring us momentum, and when the special teams is playing well, offense gets a lot of momentum, so it's been big for us. Well, we were talking about it off the air a little bit, that at Menlo College, you were a little bit more of the receiving type tight end. Here at Swasa, you're asked to do a lot of blocking. Uh, what did that mean for you mentality-wise as you came in? Um, I mean, I changed my mentality a lot from when I came in during camp. Um, I was still trying to be that receiving tight end, yeah. and, uh, and it was different for me. But uh, I think I adapted well with our tight ends coach helping us a lot, uh, Coach Garfield and uh, Coach Iskey all being on me. And, uh, and I, I, th I think that as a group of tight ends, we all make each other better because we have so much talent there. And uh, between Colin and Marcus and Paige and I, we all, we all try to make each other better every day. And that's a big part is bringing that mentality to practice every single day. 
Well, I'm sure you would consider yourself an athletic tight end, and when you think about, quote, blocking tight end, sometimes you can think about, oh, he's, he's a converted offensive tackle or something like that. But how can your athleticism help you in the blocking game? I think uh, footwork and fundamentals are a big part of uh, being a good blocking tight end. It doesn't really matter how much you weigh, honestly, mm -hmm. especially in this division. Um, I don't feel like there's, there's, uh, there's people that you can't block because of size. You, gotcha. you need... Uh, you need to have fundamentals, and you need to you need to play well. And uh, and I feel like you know being a smaller guy every week, uh, just being tall, uh, doesn't doesn't really uh, affect my blocking. So it's been helping. Uh, we're talking with Dylan Power here, tight end for the Southwestern Bulldogs. And I, I tell you, I I wish you know during the game we could get more into this and kind of slow things down and be like. All right, when the tight end is moving over, here's what Swasu's trying to do. When he's in motion, they're trying to get this game going over here. Do you enjoy playing that game being, most of the time, the, the motion tight end, kind of either trying to distract from what you guys are really doing or, you know, kind of lining up saying, I'm about to hit you in the mouth? <laughs> well, uh, funny thing, at Menlo, uh, I, was, I was a lot of the motion tight end, too. Mm -hmm. It was just more, uh, more receiving in that, but... Uh, I don't, I don't have a problem. Whatever the coaches ask me to do, I want to uh, help them, and I want to win games, and that's the big part is winning games, and that's what our whole team is about. We don't care who gets the ball. It doesn't really matter as long as, uh, you know, we're going to block for whoever gets that ball, and, and whoever, whoever does, we're going to try to finish the play. I understand. You know, this Harding team, uh, very, very tough squad, and defensively as well. They just went up against, you know, one of the top offensive teams in the league in ECU, and and really just kind of controlled the game against them, only gave up, giving up 20 points. And in an offensive league like we've been this year, I mean, you know, you, you guys probably feel like you need to score more than 20 to win the ball game on Saturday. So what do you see about this, this Harding defense that might give you guys fits on Saturday? Well, first of all, we're, uh, we're very confident in our defense, so we're not, we're not really worried about what the defense is going to do. We're yeah, it's, it's only going to take a touchdown <laughs> to get it done anyway. I'm sorry about that. <laughs> As, uh, but our offense, you know, we, we want to score every possession. That's, that's our goal, and uh, we don't want no three and outs. That's, that's, that's a big goal for us. And uh, we know against a tough team like Harding, um, we're going to have to bring it. And uh, converting those third downs, those second downs and longs, we're going to have to do it. And uh, I think we have the team to do it. So. Well, let's talk about you personally a little bit. When you came here to Swasu, were you able to kind of, kind of continue your major from Menlo, or did you have to change it up a little bit? How did that work for you? Yeah, uh, when I came here from, Swa uh, from Menlo, um, I kept my same major, marketing. Um, I really enjoy that. There's a couple things I want to do back in the Bay, uh, Bay Area with marketing. Um, so I think that there's a lot of opportunities out here for me, too. Now, your hometown was listed as North Las Vegas, yeah. right? So is that kind of where you're originally from, or yeah. how does that work? Yeah, I've, uh, I was born and raised in North Las Vegas. Mm -hmm. um, then I got my opportunity to play out in Menlo for two years, and uh, and it was really good because I got to play those first two years right away. Didn't have to redshirt, and uh, and it helped me as a player, you know, gain that confidence, and uh, it really helped. So you enjoyed that area back there, is what you're saying? Because I hear you say I want to go back to the Bay yeah. sometime, right? Yeah, California's a great place, but uh, I like Oklahoma too. I mean, my teammates have made it home here for me, so. Uh, I, I love it every day. Hey, nobody's getting on you for saying you like the Bay Area. Absolutely not. I just I was curious. What do you like about it out there? What do you what attracts you and uh, your your potential marketing self uh, back to the Bay Area? You think? What do you envision for yourself? Uh, well, I, I like. Uh, there's a lot of sports teams in the Bay yeah, Area, yeah. so um, I want to do something with the sports teams, um, like work on the marketing side of things. Um, I actually have a couple friends that uh, that that actually work for. Uh, sports teams out in the Bay Area, so uh, I'm trying to get in with that, and hopefully, hopefully that works out for me. All after. right. Well, uh, maybe you're uh, uh, selling stuff for Steph Curry down the line <laughs> or something like that. I don't know. Well, Dylan, thanks so much for talking to us, man. We appreciate it. Thank you. Good luck to you this week. Southwestern Oklahoma State takes on Harding coming up on Saturday. We've got to get you there, folks. You've been great in coming out in droves uh, to view Swasu football this year. We've got to get you out there to ASAP Energy Field because this is a huge game. Uh, it's going to be a 2 o'clock kickoff. Come out early for all the tailgate festivities. If you can't make it out to the game, listen to it on the radio. 95.5 The Coyote. 1 o'clock for the pregame show. And again, the kickoff at 2 o'clock for Dylan Power and Austin Lewis. I'm John Little.